Hey guys, Mike here with another Watchman Thinking Out Loud. You know, I'm wondering about this Revelation 12 sign that's taking place this month in September and the big part of it that's missing, the red dragon. Revelation 12 verses three through four. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns on its heads. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. We're missing this part of the sign. What I'm wondering is that period between the first part of the sign where we see the woman clothed with the sun and the 12 stars and all that, the period after that, and then this sentence starting with, then another sign appeared in heaven, if there isn't some length of time between these two parts of the sign. The word then kind of seems to hint that maybe there could be a gap of time between these two parts of the sign. They may not occur all at once. So um, we need to look at this red dragon more closely. And so I'm wondering, you know, what is going to happen? And this October 14th, 2023 eclipse, we do see this in IPEC 2 we see it here in the sky. We see Osama bin Laden here um, with the CIA intelligence agency kind of patch there on his camo uniform. And we see what looks to be a comet in his beard that is facing upward toward his mouth. We also see behind him these multiple like six or seven mountains here that are really pyramids, like kind of new world order pyramids, and they're all holding swords. So it's like they're kind of ready for the attack. We see here in the next still frame, he's kind of lifting up his hands, kind of like he's praying to Allah or something like that there. So, and we see the eclipse happening. Now, if we go to Stellarium and we go to October 14th and we just go through the hours. So I'm just gonna, let me go back and I'm just gonna go through the minutes here, okay? So notice this, this is not a full eclipse. It's a partial eclipse. And that really reminds me of what we're seeing right there in IPICO 2. So if I keep going through the minutes, you see what that eclipse looks like. Now, here's the other interesting piece to this. We have Mars, which is kind of like a red dragon, down there by Virgo. We have the child asteroid kind of in between the legs, okay? Um, And then we have Mercury. And the interesting thing about Mercury is that it's approaching the sun. Now, when we go to the end of IPECO 2, we see this, the Heliophant logo. So you'll notice the little dot moving close to the sun. We know that Heliophant is calling out that O as the sun because the word Helio or Helios means sun. Now, if I go forward in time here and we just go forward from from the 14th, the eclipse on the 14th, and we go forward in time, notice how Mercury approaches the sun. Is that the dot that we're seeing approach the Heliophant O? the sun in their logo. See, I wonder about that. We also have this asteroid 2P Enki uh, coming in here. And so we've got, we've got some stuff going on here. We've got this, you know, 2P Enki, we've got, um, you know, Mercury and Mars kind of down there um, on October 28th. But the real interesting thing I'm wondering about, guys, is on October 14th, when the Uh, when the eclipse is actually happening, could this eclipse, because the the moon is going to be reflecting sunlight back into, you know, out into space toward Virgo. Um, And it's, you know, the light pollution that the sun creates will will be blocked by the moon. And so it'll allow us to see things maybe up in the, up in this, up in space there, up in Virgo that, you know, we can't normally see. And this begs the question, you know, what is, what is, and I've covered this in previous videos, what is this giant spot in Virgo that's on the, on the leg there and Spike is right, Spike is right there. And then we have the leg and we have this giant thing in Virgo that's obscured. Okay. So they're blocking that from vision in the infrared spectrum. So whatever this is, it's, it's very cool. 
uh, in terms of its its Kelvin rating, and we can't see it um, with the naked eye, and we can't see it with just you know typical telescopes uh, that view light. We have to look at infrared spectrum, and so that's why I'm I'm covering I covered this in my other video, uh, the mid infrared and the far infrared, the all wise data set, these different infrared data sets to show that they're actually obscuring this area um, in Virgo. Okay, so. Um, you know, I, I wonder about that. Now, could the could the Psalm 83 war be taking place here because we have Osama bin Laden and it looks like these other mountain, these mountains, which may represent other countries that are surrounding Israel, could those be readying for war against Israel? Could this be the invasion of Israel that we're seeing in the Psalm 83 war? Here's Psalm 83. See how your enemies growl, how your foes rear their heads. With cunning, they conspire against your people. They plot against those you cherish. Come, they say, let us destroy them as a nation so that Israel's name is remembered no more. With one mind, they plot together. They form an alliance against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagrites, Biblos, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia, with the people of Tyre, even Assyria has joined them to reinforce Lot's descendants. We can see some of those countries here. I've listed them out here, um, you know, in terms of what these have transitioned to in terms of names today. So we see Jordan, we see Lebanon, we see Egypt, you know, Northern Egypt, kind of Southern Israel, Gaza, Palestine, Syria, okay, involved here. And then do to them as you did to Midian, as you did to Sisera and Jabin at the river of Kishon, who perished at Endor and became like dung on the ground, okay? Make them like tumbleweed, my God, like chaff before the wind as fire consumes the forest or a flame sets the mountains ablaze. So pursue them with your tempest and terrify them with your storm. Cover their faces with shame so that they will seek your name. So is that what's happening here? And again, when we go to Revelation, we can see uh, in verse two, she was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven. So that period after the word birth in verse two, how much gap of time is that? Is that a week? Is it a month? What is it? Is it a year? So that's something that we need to consider. But um, I do wonder if this eclipse on October 14th, 2023 is portending, is calling out the upcoming invasion or Psalm 83 war against Israel. Now, whether the rapture timing has anything to do with this, I don't know. The rapture could happen before this, which I hope it does. It could happen uh, after this. It could happen during this. I don't know, but it's just something I'm thinking about. I need to do a little bit more work in Stellarium to figure out what else is going on in the stars during this eclipse to see what makes sense. We've got 2P Enki, the asteroid there. Do we have any other comets or asteroids flying through here that are of note on this date? Uh, if anybody wants to help kind of inspect that stuff and come at me with some info, would would be happy to take, take uh, some help on that. So, all right, guys. Well, that's it for this one. Um, Maranatha, I, um, I look forward to seeing you guys all soon where we'll be waving palms and singing songs. And as Aaron from God a Minute likes to say, let's blow this popsicle stand. <laughs> Die. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, God bless. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.